So today I'm going to talk about some people who aren't always given the recognition that perhaps they deserve. They're one of the three special forces units in the police in the UK. Now, they are armed police officers and they play a hugely important role. When I talk about armed police officers, likely you think of a riot police officer with a really chunky riot shield or a counter-terror police officer with an even chunkier riot shield decked out in uniform which, you know, instantly commands respect of anyone around it. Now, what's often ignored is the role of police forces that defend Britain's strategic assets, and I talked about this in another video. Uh, but today I'm going to talk about one of them. The people responsible for guarding our nuclear power plants. Now, I hate to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. There is a video game called Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, and I've talked about it before because it features a private military corporation. It also features uh, the targeting of nuclear power plants by which, you know, a terrorist group brings down a lot of the world's infrastructure. And what I'd say is that clearly, in that game, the sites being guarded were not guarded by the civil nuclear constabulary, else there would have been no disaster. They're really important. The role of guarding our nuclear power plants and any materials in transit, any nuclear materials in transit, is ridiculously important. The direness of the consequences, uh, if anyone wanted to do harm to the country, if they infiltrated nuclear facilities or got their hands on radioactive, potentially really unstable materials, is enormous. Now, those people who wish to do harm to society, they're obviously pretty stupid anyway because, you know, they have awful ideology. Uh, but more than that, they're pretty stupid in wanting to mess with the CNC. But the harm that they could cause in doing so would be enormous. If they were to cause a malfunction in otherwise safe facilities, if they were to gain access to radioactive, harmful nuclear materials, they could do a lot of damage. The result of any of this really is the same. If people were to get access to any of this material or to cause some sort of a, you know, a malfunction, or there were an explosion, there would be damage from that explosion initially, which would be bad, but likely, well not likely, a million times worse would be the spreading of the radioactive materials. That would lead to human exposure, human contamination. Radiation spreads a long way, particularly if found in this sort of quantity. And it would find its way into the air supply, the water supply. Uh, and the UK would be in a really desperate situation. It would probably be the worst day the UK has ever seen. Uh, and we call this radiological terrorism because it deals with radioactive materials. And basically, these terrorists are trying to utilize radioactive materials in order to bring down the country. Now, the British police force utilizes the civil nuclear constabulary to combat this. And as you can probably tell, because this is such a threat, because it is something that has such dire consequences, they can never mess up. They don't get a day off. They don't get uh, a week where they're not quite feeling it. They don't get an hour where they, you know, accidentally let someone past. There is zero margin for error in this scenario. If one terrorist gets through, if one terrorist manages to cause an explosion, the results are dire. Uh, if, it's a major, if it's a major attack, then it would likely be millions and millions of British lives lost. So obviously it's a huge burden. But nonetheless, the CNC really do perform. Now, there are these people trying to cause harm to society through this action. And of course, they prioritize the most strategically important places in the UK, as well as those which cause the most harm to Britons. And that's sort of split in two. So we have the active counter-terror uh, police unit, which will, you know, get all terrorists. But we have the MOD police, which is another special forces unit, which will effectively defend Britain's strategic assets, uh, places of real strategic importance. But the CNC deals with the latter of that. Uh, sort of a civil nuclear plant, which could do the most harm to Britons. Now, as stated, it's, you know, really, really effective, and that's earned it the title of one of Britain's three groups of special forces, alongside the British Transport Police and uh, the MOD Police. And the MOD police is counter-terror, protection against high-risk threats, that sort of thing. The CNC can operate outside of its jurisdiction as a special forces unit, 
and basically operate in mutual aid situations. Uh, and this gives them the proper scope to exercise the military authority they need, or the police authority they need, to keep the nation safe. And that's hugely important. This carries uh, for their division in the north uh, and Scotland, as well as the south. And so these people are really high priority in regard to the policing in the UK because the consequences are so dire. Someone I was talking to was comparing it to uh, an ad, uh, which I looked at, called The Most Interesting Man in the World. And it's basically hyperbole, but it's actually right. Uh, the CNC are so important that ambul ambulances move out of their way. They give way to them if it's an emergency. Uh, they tell the police what to do. They police the police uh, if the police are not doing the right job and basically contradicting policy that's going to uh, be a strategic error for the UK nuclear civil plant. The annual budget, and I'm just going to talk about this for a minute because I actually think it's quite interesting and different to other, uh, other branches of the police force. The annual budget of the Civil Nuclear Constabulary is about 100 million per year. Uh, and that is obviously maintained because there is no government and no firm which doesn't recognise the huge threat uh, that terrorism could possibly pose, uh, particularly in this sort of situation. But it doesn't work the same way as the majority of police services. Funding doesn't work through purely taxpayer funded uh, services. The way it works is this, there will be a little bit of uh, basically, I guess, taxpayer funds in order to make up the difference perhaps, but the vast, vast, vast majority of funding for the CNC comes from nuclear firms themselves. It's a sort of tax on the nuclear firms, but really it's an obligation of good practice, which the nuclear firms recognise because it gives them protection and security. The nuclear firms will pay a fee to the CM, to the uh, civil nuclear constabulary yearly. And this will be paid by every single company that uh, runs or is in charge of the UK's 10 nuclear power plants. Anyway, it's not necessary, necessarily funded so much by taxpayer money, uh, but more so the uh, nuclear firms that operate within the UK which is a brilliant way to offset costs for something that people all agree is hugely important. Just to emphasize, the CNC don't get a year off. They run uh, every single year protecting all 10 of new, uh, Britain's nu nuclear power plants 24-7, 365, while conducting additional training. Now, this is important. And I think to make this point, I looked at the report from 2020 to 2021 and of course we know that was a year with huge disruption to police services in general that made huge logistical errors but nonetheless they guarded every single site constantly throughout that year because they have to uh even with issues if you were to say that they you know went past using ppe the logistical issues that COVID created was huge, and the fact that they managed to continue just really does prove their fortitude. So, during the year of COVID, 2020 to 2021, uh, year long they maintained 500 officers with advanced carbine weapon systems and launcher capability through further advanced training. They policed and protected all 10 nuclear sites constantly round the clock in the UK. Uh, they had 1,100 firearms officers, firearms experts, arguably the best in the world. 40 SEG officers, that's specialist escort, escort group officers, uh, vehicles and route experts who can basically protect uh, nuclear materials in transit, as well as uh, units within the CNC itself. Uh, they had 200 police medics, 10 counter drone operators, 165 national firearms instructors, trained 137 officers in dynamic search and interdiction. And I think that's basically just really advanced, like hyper advanced CQB training. Uh, they had 193 operation, uh, operational firearms commanders. They delivered over 10,000 hours of firearms training, utilizing more than 10 weapon systems. Uh, they in a literal sense, are this most interesting man in the world. They 
have to perform, uh, and they have severe authority because it's necessary, and they perform no matter you know the year, no matter the circumstance, because they have to. Now, your average CNC officer will be trained at the very least, uh, at absolute minimum, with the Heckler and Koch G36 rifle. In I don't think there's a case where it's just this. But uh, as a basis, every single officer has to be trained with the Heckler and Koch G36 rifle, both the KNC variants, uh, as well as the Glock 17 uh, of various variants as well. They're also trained with the X25 laser and the L104A12 uh, truncheon launcher, which launches uh, some sort of rubber projectile uh, of 37 millimeters. Now, I looked up what sort of systems they use. And they said that during COVID, they utilized over 10 weapon systems in training. Uh, but I think it's actually just really important to go over the scope of what they use. I'm going to leave a list in the description. Please do go take a look at it, uh, because it's actually ridiculously impressive. Uh, there's about a list of over 100 weapon systems that they are utilizing for training, for roleplay, for whatever, to gain familiar sort of familiarity with the system in itself and it's just huge so i am going to it's in alphabetical order i will start on c and end on g so this is literally just c to g of what they use they utilize the ccp wp ak-47 the cogswell and harrison uh, a colt combat commander colt mark 4 series 20 the colt python the colt diamondback the CS Jet Spray of 30cc, the CZ-75, the Dicar Philadelphia Derringer, uh, the Dillon Aero Minigun, the Enfield Revolver, the Irma, the Irma, the Irma Verke MP40, the Franchi Spass 12, the Gat Gun Air Pistol, the Glock 17, Glock 17 with differentiated, differentiated, differentiated rail systems, deactivated Glock 17s, Glock 17Ls, Glock 17TUTM with a blue frame, the Glock 22, the Glock 26, the Glock Gen 417, uh, a training version of the Glock 17, the Glock Gen 419, the Glock 17 BBR BBR barrel, the Glock 17 UTM MMR barrel, the Glock Megat FTS 7, uh, G17, the Glock UTM conversion kit uh, with unknown specifications, the Glock UTM with differentiated differentiated barrel lengths and G17 modifications. That's just uh, C to G. And there's a list of about 100 systems on here. Uh, and I think there's, you know, even Luger on here somewhere. Uh, Luger P09. Uh, and as you just heard, the MP40. They utilize a lot of systems, both in training uh, and in familiarity, because terrorists could attack with any single weapon system. It doesn't just have to be stuff of this age, and they have to know it inside and out. And this is why there are so many firearms officers, because there has to be intense proficiency. Uh, and so I will, I'll leave that list up. Please don't go take a look at it. Anyway, to finish off, uh, they have a headquarters in Cullum with three operational units, seven support units, uh, and you've got to be pretty stupid to mess with the CNC. Some people do, and they make a number of arrests each year. I think 2016, there were 26 odd arrests, either on suspicion of, well, no, only on suspicion of, uh, or sort of, uh, su yeah, suspicion of uh, potentially committing a crime. Uh, and they utilize a lot of systems. Uh, but generally, to go over their role, it's escorting nuclear materials in transit, pursu pursuing or detaining subjects who have unlawfully removed, interfered with materials guarded by the CNC, or are reasonably suspected of being guilty of doing any of that. They guard uh, and provide security to the actual nuclear sites themselves, including, you know, checkpoints, that sort of stuff. Uh, they guard the land around sites up to five kilometers from the boundary of the nuclear plant itself, uh, which will be heavily policed as well as inside. They uh, use safeguarding measures in shipyards, they accompany uh, ships and ensure their safe transit when they're carrying nuclear materials. The CNC is really, really important. They prevent the UK having the worst day it will ever have. And they don't get a day off, they don't get an hour off, they don't get to, uh, you know, let one guy through. And so I think for that, despite the fact that they are often underappreciated, often not even known, I think they should be recognised. 
and I'll leave it there.